Let us enter the time capsule, the clock gallery, for which Salajang Museum is most famous for. It is an incomparable collection of clocks and especially one marvelous piece that draws crowds every time it chimes. Collecting clocks appears to have been a favorite hobby with many a royal personage. Louis XIV, Louis XVI, Queen Victoria and King Edward all had collections of clocks. It is believed that King Edward himself had about 2,000 clocks. Salarjung nurtured the same passion with clocks as with all the wonderful objects he collected. The museum has a fabulous collection and majority of these clocks have been acquired from the five superpowers in clock making, France, Germany, Italy, England and Switzerland. Let's not waste precious minutes. Come, let us work through time. The clock gallery beckons us. Time ticks in hundreds of clocks as we enter the clock room of Salajang Museum. The breathtaking variety of clocks stuns you into silence. The overwhelming collection of the museum includes carriage clocks, chamber clocks, table clocks, bracket clocks, wall clocks, period clocks set in metal, marble, porcelain and glass cases. Many of the hundreds of exhibits on display are working and can be heard ticking, striking and chiming the hours. Then we realize that the rulers of historic Hyderabad, the glorious city of the Nizams, had a magnificent obsession for clocks and clock towers. We see many a main junction of the city adorned by a beautiful clock tower. The Sikandrabad clock tower is a majestic heritage example. The Mehboob Chowk Clock Tower near Charminar and the clock tower that adorns Muzam Jahi Market. One cannot forget that Charminar itself has a clock too. The museum houses approximately 700 wonderful clocks from all over the world. A sensational selection of timekeeping machines dated from 18th, 19th and 20th centuries. From the minuscule, tiny curio clocks set in magnifying glasses, to the huge and majestic grandfather clocks, Salajang Museum has them all.
Those who visit the museum have the occasion to follow the way in which the means of measuring the time had developed in the 18th century. during the 18th century that clocks started being made with more decorative features. The arch dial replaced the earlier square dial. The dials which were formerly made with metal were replaced with the more aesthetic looking enamel, exotic and rich wood like mahogany and walnut wood started being used for the cases. Clocks took on enchanting shapes and designs. Clocks started being adorned with the fantastic and immensely attractive Japanese and Chinese designs. France became famous for its beautiful gilt bronze cased ormolu clocks which were much sought after for the decorative value. Clocks transformed from being more timekeepers to including and adding clockwork to keep track of phases of the moon, calendar and also added the attraction of melodious chimes. There are many clocks of this period in Salajang Museum, ranging from small 8-day pendulum clocks to stately and elaborate grandfather clocks with scenes painted on the space between the arches of the clock face. Some magnificent 20th century clocks too are on display. which come with a history, the prized pieces which belonged to emperors, kings and exalted personages are definitely the more treasured and interesting possession of the gallery. An exclusive object, a bracket clock that belonged to King Louis XV of 17th century is a royal piece. With a beautiful wooden case and tortoise shell veneer, mounted with gilt bronze decoration and also embellished with a Louis XV medallion, it is indeed a rare coveted piece. Any great collection of clocks in the world isn't complete without one of Julian Lee Roy's classic timepieces. 
Leroy was regarded as the most famous 18th century French clockmaker and was horologist to King Louis XIV. He is said to be the inventor of horizontal or edify style of clocks. A fantastic Leroy clock is on display at Salajang Museum. Set on a marble pedestal and positioned between two marble columns and decorated with gilt bronze mounts, that royal clock is a superb example of Leroy's brilliance. It is interesting to note that one comes across pieces particularly important for their association with historical personages and decorative appeal and many of these pieces belonged to French royalty and the empire period. French clubs participated in a new art movement, the neoclassism. There is a fantastic example of the neoclassical style of Louis XVI at Salajang Museum. It is a beautiful porcelain dialed clock mounted on a metal pedestal and decorated with a painting of French nobility. A beautifully cast and gilded gun carriage clock set on an Exquisitely decorated rich metallic pedestal figuring Napoleon at the gun is an exemplary piece from the Empire period which spanned the 18th and 19th centuries in France. Technical advances and superb workmanship combined to place England at the forefront of clockmaking in the later part of the 17th century and into the 18th century. British antique bracket clocks were regarded as the epitome of English clockmaking. Bracket clocks were spring-driven pendulum clocks, most often housed in a rectangular case. England, which was at the peak of excellence in clock making, introduced many innovations to design curios and automata or mechanical human or animal figures which move by clockwork motivation. The human figure usually strikes the time on a bell. One such masterpiece is the large British bracket clock housed in the gallery, formerly displayed in the courtyard. This clock has become almost synonymous with Salajang Museum. The clock is so famous that large crowds of people actually visit the museum only to view the clock striking the time and nothing else. It is a star attraction all by itself. This famous bracket clock, an unbeatable crowd puller among the entire museum's exhibits, is a marvelous example of the wonderful curio clocks which were popular in Europe in the 18th and 19th centuries. It was probably acquired in the early 20th century by Salajang III from the renowned Cook and Kelby Company. It is decorated with classical Greek and Roman motifs such as winged cherubs, forest creatures, asanthus leaves and floral wreaths. The golden Grecian pillars, winged bugle and immensely attractive to the viewers. It is a show stealer in every sense. Made up of more than 350 parts, it has a unique mechanical device by which a miniature toy figure comes out and strikes a gong at each hour before returning back to its enclosure. One can notice 
that the toy blacksmith who can be seen holding a hammer and strikes the seconds without a break. The musical clock chimes every 15 minutes and has three separate dials for the day, date and month. Embellished with beautifully wrought metallic mounts, this clock is one of the most attractive exhibits of the Salaji Museum. This is a splendid example of the automata technique perfected by the European clockmakers. In their day, such clocks were used as toys or sources of amusement for the very rich. British clocks underwent many marvelous variations and among the museum's collection is an 18th century noteworthy arch-dialed timepiece with spidery hands and the case is decorated with gilded mounts. This is my first trip to Hyderabad. I've been to India, in India many times, but it's the first time I've been here. And one of the first things I wanted to see when I came to Hyderabad was this wonderful Sally Young Museum. Um, I'd read so much about it in lots of the guidebooks, um, so that's why it was my number one attraction when I arrived in Hyderabad. Um, the first thing that struck me about the museum is just the scale of it. I'm just so amazed that one individual has managed to collect so many beautiful historical items over a fairly short lifespan and also sort of how he managed to organise and collect it all, how he all managed to ship it all back to uh, back here to Hyderabad and I'm just really 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 very impressed and it's also one of the things I didn't realise, I know he was a a man who travelled all around the world was how much um, European, in particular English antiquity, is housed in this collection. Particularly, as you can see behind here, a lot of the grandfather clocks, which we're very, very familiar with in the UK. But again, I didn't realise there was there was such a wonderful collection here in Hyderabad. German porcelain clocks were popular for their attractive designs and exquisite porcelain workmanship and Salajan Museum has a few very attractive pieces that speak volumes of the art and craftsmanship. German horologers became famous at the beginning of the 18th century by making the wall pendulums with handmade mechanisms kept in artistically sculpted cases with flora and fauna motifs having a special charm in the way they announced the hours with birds. Cuckoo clocks became an ingenious and highly popular method of time telling. There are quite a number of traditional German cuckoo clocks in the museum where the cuckoo bird appears through a trap door while the clock is striking. Several decorative Swiss table clocks and a host of European clocks in many shapes like human figures, churches and many other delightful forms catch our attention. Precision and splendor are watchwords for any reputed clockmaker or horologer and almost every piece in Salajang's collection reflects both these qualities.
As we have seen, Salajang Museum's collection contains a significant number of exemplars that had been created at Swiss, French, German and English firms in the 19th and the 20th centuries. The bewildering array of clocks must have been a visual delight for clock enthusiasts as well as an awesome eye-opening experience to all visitors. Our journey in the incredible time capsule comes to close. Salarjung's gigantic efforts gave us so much pleasure that we cannot but spend few seconds in appreciating him for acquiring these wonderful clocks. Our next episode will take you into the realm of Indian miniature painting, an art perfected in India to the point of flourishing fine art by the Mughals and the Rajasthans and other kingdoms. It unveils a world of history, romance, mythology and religion encapsulated in vivid colors and mini formats for your pleasure. Keep watching, Salajang Museum's episodes are a definite must-see.